This video is going to be a film study slash commentary on the Ravens uh, duo at inside linebacker Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith. The Ravens appear that uh, as if they're going to get at least one more year out of these guys that, that if you ask me, when they're on the field together, um, act as a, as a force multiplier. Patrick Queen, Roquan Smith, they don't, I think they only played 10 games together next to one another in 2022. And, and during that time, the Ravens' defense gave up 156 points. But, but that number really should be considered 142, if you ask me, because the Bengals scored a pair of defensive touchdowns, one in the Week 18 regular season finale, uh, a strip six, I think, that was occurred in the end zone. And then, of course, Sam Hubbard's 99-yard fumble return for a touchdown in the Bengals' 24-17 wildcard win. So 10 games together, uh, seven of which I think Lamar either didn't play in at all, or he got injured in. Queen and Smith led a defense that allowed 14.2 points per game during that time. This video will be organized by Run Reads first. We're going to get the film going here quick. Some of my lead-ins recently have been um, a little too long. So we're going to let Run Reads, Run Plays go first. Then I'll switch over to some pass plays. Uh, I will stop and kind of um, talk about some of the plays that will be annotated, as you can see on the screen. There'll be some examples of Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith playing at just great angles, playing downhill in a lot of cases, and just trusting each other to be there. And, and that last element, the trust, is one that can only be achieved through either repetition, practice reps next to each other, meeting, meeting rooms or talking to one another before or after practice or on the cell phone or even meeting after practice on their own time developing that trust somewhere else and then on the field as well. And they certainly didn't have much time, you know, at all together before Roquan was in there as a starter. They fit where they're supposed to be together. And when you talk about, and it's okay if, if you know, maybe you don't understand what I mean about fit where they're supposed to be and they trust each other to be there. That's all right. You know, maybe in a separate video or in the comment section, I'll try to explain that. I love watching the end zone angle. I feel like it shows the commitment that guys have at inside linebacker and multiple positions, don't get me wrong. But for these two guys, it shows how aware they are, how agile they are in their movement, and then how, how hostile they are when they arrive on scene. Um, and sometimes they arrive together or sometimes like this one from the end zone, you know, they arrive at different times and one of them cleans up the other mess, cleans up the mess that the other guy forgot. I only included 11 run plays here because to me, it does not take long to see how pre precise with their fits these guys are and how committed they are to playing with, you know, incredible passion and, uh, and, and great angles. Um, personally, I will talk about Patrick Queen here first. I'm glad that the Ravens and Patrick Queen are back together for at least another year. Um, both of these guys, Queen and Smith, are so fast, but it's almost kind of not fair or, or I would say a little inaccurate to use the word fast, talking about an inside linebacker, I guess what I'll say is these guys are quick. Not just quick to run or quick to redirect or move, you know, in a physical sense quick, but they're quick to read and recognize, particularly against the run. This is probably my favorite play from the 2023 season of, of any single play that I saw in all the plays I watched. First, I'm biased because it's the Ravens. But second, I love the fit by Roquan Smith here. And then, I mean, I don't know what you can say about Marlon Humphrey being a corner, following a guy across in man, seeing the you know kickout block that I think Malik Harrison tries to destroy. And then Marlon realizes immediately, oh, I no longer have to cover that guy because there's a run block occurring. The fit by Roquan, I mean, he almost kind of disappears in here. I guess I'll run this slow motion. Forgive me if it's kind of staccato or, or you know, rigid. And then those two guys, just spectacular football players. Queen not involved in the play there, but it's it's my favorite play. I will say this. Uh, another film study was done of Queen recently. This is the same play from All-22. Um, EA Edgar Allen <clears throat> did a video about Queen, and I, I really love the title, Desire Caught by the Tail. I'll try to link it up here. Uh, in the top right, if I can. I just think it encapsulates his play so well. When I say his, I mean Patrick Queen. He plays extremely physical, committed, as I mentioned earlier. And his discipline, to me, seems to be at an extremely high level, growing exponentially 
before our eyes. In each of the last two seasons, 2021 and 2022, I have felt like Patrick Queen got better during the year. In 2021, people, some people attributed it to him playing next to Josh Bynes. In 2022, they attributed it to him playing next to Roquan Smith. I'm not so sure that he's just not a guy who just improves on his own throughout the course of the season. And personally, I've said this multiple times, I don't think the coaching he received in the 2021 season was um, was all that high quality at, at the position group and at the coordinator level as compared to 2022. Some of these plays are going to loop, to be honest with you. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people said about Queen, during his first two years, he, he presents as a guy who's really disciplined. When you watch the film in 2022, I love his refusal to get blocked at times, get involved in the play. This is not his uh, natural position. He's walked up here next to um, 49, I think, Phillips, but I might be wrong there. And so they're going to slam Phillips into the B gap, which leaves Queen with the C gap. He takes on the kick out block, Johnu Smith and then redirects back into the run play in the middle. Now there's other guys who've already clogged this up, but Patrick Queen is committed to get to the football. There is just no question on every single play he's going to give you everything he's got. Love watching people play football like this, you know, to be honest with you. Last run play, then maybe we'll let a couple other ones loop, and then we'll talk about some pass plays. A little bit more about Queen, just from, from my judgment. I love the, the way they play this here, by the way. Queen ends up being the front side guy, and to me, he wrong arms this, meaning he ends up on inside as opposed to setting it back inside to his partner. So we'll let it play slower. Now, this lineman comes off here. It does a nice job, if you ask me. This lineman comes off of the combo with the tight end to kind of pin Queen inside. So maybe it's an unintentional wrong arm on Queen's part, but then Smith folds over the top. You could take the numbers and exchange them on this play, and I would believe it. I mean, either guy could do this. Talking about Queen, you know, wrong arming it, and then Smith folding over the top. Both of these guys are so agile, and, and they can redirect so well. It wouldn't surprise me if that play was made by Queen on the back end and then Roquan on the front end. I'm going to let these run plays continue to go through while I talk about Queen a little bit. He's still only 23, like as of this day right now as I record it. Still only 23. Going to turn 24 in August, yet he's already played in 50 NFL games and made over 320 career tackles. I think that's pretty amazing. Roquan Smith, on the other hand, is 26. Uh, he turned 26 this offseason. He's just a warrior. I, I may spend most of this video talking about Queen, but that's just because Roquan Smith is so daggone good on every level that you kind of don't need to talk him up. He, he reminds me of some of those guys that are just – the best at their, you know, profession, and you don't need to talk them up. Or the toughest guy on the block, you don't need to talk about how tough he is because it's just a given. I, re I do remember talking to people when the Ravens acquired him and some things said uh, about him being inconsistent in pass coverage and not being a shock and shed inside linebacker. I did a, I did a film study last year when the Ravens got him about Roquan Smith, just, you know, following that trade, trying to get some content out. And I just did not, I did not see those deficiencies. I, I didn't point them out in my video because I didn't see them. If I saw them, I would point them out. I pride myself on being someone who's straightforward and just going to tell you what I think I see. And, you know, my inaccuracy would be maybe I don't see the correct things. It's not going to be that I'm not telling you what I see. So I may just not have seen the things that other people did. I didn't see them, so I didn't relay them. And I damn sure didn't see them in the nine games he played with the Ravens. We're going to let this play run one more time through, and then we'll get to the pass plays. Uh, amazing football player, amazing acquisition, if you ask me, for the Ravens to go get and pair next to uh, Patrick Queen. Going to move on to some uh, pass drops here. <clears throat> and I don't like to do NFL rankings, to be honest with you. I'm going to let the pass drops run and then rotate them back through a second time. I don't like to do rankings. Maybe, you know, if you've listened to my content long enough, you may know that. I don't like to do them for NFL players. I don't like to do them for college players. I don't even like to do them for high school players, although on some level, high school, it's, it's you know, it's far simpler to do and creates less problems. It seems unusual to me to attempt to rank players who might play in, in different schemes or under different expectations. And to me, continuing on that Roquan Smith trade and the way he was evaluated or the way certain people talked about him, when the Ravens acquired, acquired him, he can play in any system. 
He can play any position at inside linebacker or under any structure. And when I say he can play, I mean immediately. Um, I guess maybe the need to rank players comes from like listening or watching sports analysts on TV or the radio do it themselves. And they're, and oftentimes, you know, they're trying to fill time and create discussion points or, or really, you know, debate points. And maybe I'm doing the same thing sometimes too. I don't know. I guess what I really think is this as a Ravens fan and, and a content creator, having Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith at the same time, it's just a blessing for the team. And I would not trade them for any duo, not for 2023. Meaning, you know, contract situation aside, style of play aside, what you're asking your defense to do aside. For 2023, Ravens are just in a wonderful place at inside linebacker, and I wouldn't trade these two guys for any other uh, duo across the league. So that's that's the closest you're going to get to a ranking from me. Against the pass, you know, in coverage, look, there was a lot of, of discussion, rightfully so in some cases, about Patrick Queen's early weaknesses in the NFL. It was well documented, right? He seems seems to me he's grown up a lot. He's grown past a lot of that, I should say. He's put together a solid enough play in 2023 for me in coverage, 2022, excuse me, for me in coverage to say that he's far better than a lot of us probably understand because we're judging him based on the cumulative effect of his work in his three seasons Whereas there was definitely improvement in 2023. I think getting away from Wink's system of so much man-to-man helped him when we did see him play zone. And what I mean by that, and that's not a shot at Wink Martindale, that's just me saying by playing less zone under Wink, when we did see zone responsibilities out of him, the efficiency, the level of play, the awareness was not as high just because he was asked to do those things less. It stands to reason that he wouldn't be as good at them when you did ask him to do that. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, and I, I want to try to attack and maybe knock down or eliminate, is that he's often to the boundary. And that can be looked at as, in some cases, be um, called an attempt to protect him or an attempt to protect the defense and, and by asking him to cover less space. You know, you got the running back to the boundary, typically, and maybe one receiver, so there's there's less space to cover. The, jo- the job is easier. The job is simpler. I'll be honest with you, I'm not so sure those last two sentences are true. When you're playing inside linebacker to the boundary, you're often away from the nickel defender to the boundary. The nickel is predominantly set to the field. If you think about the Bengals offense, they would often set the running back and tight end to the boundary out of 11 personnel. That's not nearly as simple as just having the running back and one receiver. When you've got the running back, tight end, and the Z, or and a, and, a, and a third receiver to the boundary, it's not nearly as simple for me to just hide someone to the boundary, particularly in the NFL. And I'm going to stop the video here in a second and show a picture. Look, the NFL hashes are tight to one another, meaning there is there's more space into the boundary in the NFL than there is in college and certainly in in high school. I hope you got I hope this diagram shows up well um, on my streaming PC or streaming laptop. It does, but you can see the width of the field. First of all, the 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 numbers all the way to our left on the screen, 53 and a third yards, and then the NFL hashes is what you see on screen, 18 and a half feet. College 40 feet. I actually thought it was 38.5 for some reason for the longest time. And then high school, a significant difference. So let's just focus on NFL and college. The difference between the ball being on the hash is there's a lot more space to cover to the boundary. The boundary can be used more effectively because there is more space there. Hopefully I'm saying that in a way that makes sense. If, if I'm not, someone in the comment section should be able to. My point in bringing this up and showing this diagram is Patrick Queen playing to the boundary most of the time, since he's been paired with Roquan Smith, I don't think means that they're trying to hide him all the time. I'm not exactly sure what it means. I just know being away from the nickel defender with a lot of space to cover, which you do to the to the boundary, to the short side of the field in the NFL, I don't think is, is, is the same as college or high school, where you have boundary side corners, boundary side inside linebackers. Hopefully this comparison um, diagram that I'm showing now shed some light on that. Maybe it does a better job of explaining the 
the space that a, a boundary side inside linebacker has to cover or even a boundary side corner. Um, Queen used to be an inside linebacker that I would say was too often heavily focused on the quarterback. In zone coverage, he was so focused on the quarterback that he had little awareness of the routes developing, you know, to his outside. Meaning, he in zone, he would often be staring at the quarterback so heavily that he didn't defend the route at all. He just defended the quarterback's eyes, you know, therefore could be either manipulated or moved to one side unintentionally, perhaps, by the quarterback away from where the ball ends up going in the progression of the quarterback's reads. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. Going to let a couple more pass plays uh, run here. This is an example of Queen playing to the boundary um, away from the nickel defender. So let's just um, show how many defenders there are. There's three here to the boundary, three here to the field. Now you would say Roquan Smith's right foot is on the midline, Coach, so he's in the middle. Generally, in a lot of the coverages that we're going to see, Smith is going to be dropping like this, Queen dropping like this, and he doesn't have an outside protector, meaning Roquan Smith has someone outside leverage of him at the second level, Kyle Hamilton in this case, to protect him for, for less space to cover, even though there is far more space from here to the right sideline than there is to this direction. But the point is, it's a give and take. There's no nickel defender to protect him in that space that is wider than playing to the boundary in college. Conversely, there's more space to the field where Kyle Hamilton's lined up. However, you know, to offset that a little bit, Hamilton and Roquan Smith can be used to defend that space together. Hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. The routes were drawn up a minute ago. I'll let you see them again. I think that this is a great example of how these guys play together. That's the routes that I think you get. I think you get a vertical by two, the slot, you know, number two receiver, and then a little in by number one, who is the tight end. Back is set away to the field, to the nickel side. Watch the quarterback's eyes, and I think he picks up Queen doing a great job. You can see his eyes here now, picking up something. I think he's looking for the second-level defender, Queen, and seeing if he can fit this thing under here now. Well, Queen takes it away by letting two go vertical. Burrow knows it's not there. Comes back to the check down. Roquan breaks on it. Big play. I paused it a little bit. Let me let it run, say, two more times through. Feel free um, in the comment section to mention things that, you know, maybe I'm not mentioning or analyzing on this play. I just feel like this shows to the boundary. Queen being aware of the routes that might be there, even though in this case he's staring at the quarterback and he's reading the quarterback's eyes and drifting in this direction because uh, that's where Joe Burrow's looking. All right, the interception against the Bengals in week five is, um, you know, for me, the clearest example of the technical progress that Queen has. Now it it off it is it kind of is in um, diametrically opposed to the previous play I just showed you, because Queen is going to be staring. He was staring at Joe Burrow on the previous play, and on this one, he's reading run for run pass. Once he sees pass, turns his back to the quarterback. Love it. Picks up the route, plays the route, not the quarterback. Sits under the route. Burrow doesn't take the check down in this case, which would have been the running back underneath. And you can also see that, in this case, Queen is lined up to the field with the ball on the right hash. But I think that this, I, you know, some would say that Queen identified the formation and the motion as a, as a precursor, as an, as an indicator for the route that was to come. And that may be true, all right? That may be true. But I've seen Queen take similar pass drops to this, meaning turning his back, getting out in his drop, fitting underneath the route, defending the route, making the quarterback you know, look for a check down. Of course, there was criticism of Joe Burrow. He should have thrown the check down, et cetera, et cetera. My point is, if you looked at film prior to 2022, in zone like this, you saw a lot of times where he wasn't playing the route at all. He was manipulated by the quarterback's eyes, and then the quarterback was able to throw in whichever direction a queen did not hedge to, did not drift to. I've seen him take similar pass drops like this last year. I'm not willing to chalk this one up to scouting or just pre-snap information. 
uh, or pre-snap identification, excuse me, that he was given by the coaches. I think we have to give credit to the player if and when they make an amazing play. You know, even if it's, um, in this case, you know, week five against the Bengals, two to three weeks after, you know, he had missed some opportunities to make plays on less difficult interceptions. I think a lot of people talk about him having two chances to make interceptions prior to that week five game. Uh, this is one later in the season that is, you know, equally amazing, but again, shows that in certain coverages, Queen is going to be reading the quarterback's eyes and reacting to it. Having said that, there's still some pre-snap awareness that he's got three tight to the to the uh, right tackle, meaning there there's three receivers to this side, two to the left, which is Queen's side, the boundary, but three is tight, so three could be a threat to to run a drag. Three could be a threat to run, you know, an angled sit, or in this case, you know, something up the seam, what we would call a lube route between the hashes up the middle of the field. Queen plays the quarterback's eyes. However, I still think he's got awareness of the formation pre-snap and what type of route that guy might might line up. Look, I think this pairing, getting back to Roquan and uh, Queen, as we wrap this up, longer video than I intended it to be, I think this is a unique pairing. And that we as Ravens fans, you know, should not take it for granted. I, I have come to really not enjoy using that word should. I really don't believe in the concept of should. You either do or you do not. So I'm suggesting that we all need to uh, recognize how unique this pairing is and not take it for granted. The last two years, as an overall team record, 2021 and 2022, they didn't end the way that we as Ravens fans wanted them to. Even even our banner season of 2019 in terms of regular season being 14-2, and two, that was cut down in the divisional round loss to the Titans. Despite all that, what we would consider disappointments, and they are, you know, 2021 and 2022 ended in disappointing fashion, despite all the injuries. 2019, extremely disappointing for being, you know, the, possibly the best team in the NFL that year. Despite all those disappointments, and they are, we've been blessed. You're talking about, I believe, a 57 and 29 regular season record since 2018. I hope I did my math there right. I added up twice. So if I did not, please let me know. And we've had some great duos even during that time. Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, Mark Ingram and Gus Edwards, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, even though, you know, 2021, those guys didn't get a chance to play together much at all. And then, I don't know, does, does Mark Andrews, Hayden Hurst, and Nick Boyle count as a dynamic duo? I mean, there's three of them. To me, Queen and Smith are playing at an incredibly high level at the same position, which is unique. And, and then also another factor, I think, that makes it rare or unique or some other um, word that's synonymous with those two is that they're team-first guys. They appear to be team-first players to me. And they're both very young, passionate about football. You can see it in their play. You can see how they celebrate for other dudes on the team when they make plays. I think it's unique. And, again, I don't like using that word again, but I think we should appreciate it while we have it because in, in professional sports or professional football especially, I think it's rare to get uh, two guys at this level playing the same position. Uh, finally, to wrap it up, if these two guys – Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, if they can play 16 or 17 games together next year or this year coming up, and the offensive skill guys can all get on the field together. And so, I mean, Lamar, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, you know, then our running back duo, J.K. and Gus, OBJ and Duve Aguilar are our, our, our veteran receivers, I guess, compared to Bateman and Zay Flowers, even though Duve's about the same age as, as Bateman. Likely, Kolar. If, if the core of that group can get on the field for 12 to 14 games, meaning that when I say the core, I mean 80 to 90% of them, the guys going to miss games, you know, when they're not playing hurt. And this, this Ravens team's ready for anything. They are. With these two guys in the middle, uh, Marlon Humphrey, Ronnie Stanley, Lamar, clearly, you know, that's the, that's the trio that is non-negotiable for us to win a lot of games. That's, there's no doubt about it. But I believe that, these two inside linebackers, despite a lot of people saying inside linebacker is a undervalued or not a premium position, it is on this team, and it is for next year, and it's a good thing. It's a damn good thing. 
because these two guys bring it on every snap. They bring it um, every week. And they're both, um, they're both willing to do the right thing, the right play. Take on a blocker the right way to let others make the play. And that's not always the case. Uh, particularly at the D-line, D-N position outside the linebacker, you see guys that are worried about their stats. I think you see it at times at inside linebacker too. These guys look like they do things the right way on every snap in the game. And to me, if they're doing things the correct way on every snap in the game, they're doing the same thing in practice. They're doing the same thing in meeting rooms. And they're probably the guys who show up early and stay late to study the film and look for those pre-snap indicators like that week five interception that Patrick Queen made against Joe Burrow. I think it's an incredibly deep roster. These two guys are far more important than a lot of us recognize, probably myself included. Them being healthy, being around for 16, 17 games, along with Lamar, Ronnie Stanley, Marlon Humphrey, you know, and all the offensive skill position players really should excite all of us. There's that word again. It does me. Makes me look forward to covering the team during the season. Let me know if you think I missed any elements of these guys play. Clearly, I didn't show, you know, Patrick Queen's missed opportunity as a sack to get a sack against Josh Allen in week four at home. Huge moment. Josh Allen gets a touchdown, I believe. I didn't show Roquan Smith getting beat in man by uh, Najee Harris for the go-ahead or game-winning touchdown, you know, for the Steelers in Baltimore. I didn't show those things. Uh, I was trying to focus on the positive things they're very capable of, but I recognize those things happen, so that's why I mention it now. If you listen this long, you know, let me know what you think in the comment section of the video, the film study, some of my commentary. It's been a while since I put out a video about the Ravens. This one took a little bit to organize and then to create my commentary because I wanted to be direct and say the things I meant and meant the things I said. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would um, enjoy this content, enjoy the video and my commentary, please consider uh, grabbing a link and sharing the video out on social media to help my video get more reach.